Hi guys, it's Arshal R here and in this week's video I'm going to be talking about other strategies that you should be looking at if you're looking to get involved in property. So before we do that, I need a small favour from you. I need you to hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so that every time I release a video you get, to notifi get notified about it. So here's what we're going to hear over the next few minutes. We're going to be looking at strategies that no one else has been talking about. We're going to be talking about how to get involved in these and more important, how you can do these with none of your own money. So I've been involved in property over 20 years and in that 20 year period, I've done pretty much every single property strategy that you can think of. So I've done the below market value deals, I've done the no money down deals, I've done you know, pretty much every strategy. I've done rent to rent, I've done HMO, I've done service accommodation, I've done commercial to residential, I've done developments, you name it, I've actually done it. Now, you could say that I'm probably a um, jack of all trades, master of none, but believe it or not, I've actually made money all the strategies that I've done. So I have pretty much done, uh, been quite successful in property. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because there's lots of strategies that people don't really talk about and how you can do this and actually make money from them without actually spending your own money. Now, one of the things that I'll be talking about, well, we all know about sourcing. So sourcing is where you, we're pretty much like a glorified estate agent where someone's looking to sell a property, we've got investors that are looking to buy a property, kind of put them together and we charge a fee. So that's quite straightforward. That's like property investing 101 stuff. Then uh, we've got rent to rent again, that's almost like property 101 strategies. When we talk about 101, it's like entry level strategies. I wanna to start to take you up a gear. I wanna show you some of the more enterprising, the more strategic, the more high level stuff that you should be looking to achieve or get to achieve. So we're gonna be talking about planning. We're gonna be talking about planning gains. Now, planning gains, people automatically assume that you have to buy a property, go off and get planning permission, and then either develop it or sell it. Well, I'll tell you that you don't actually have to buy the property. You can get what is known as an option on the land or the property, and you can go off and get planning permission. Now, there is a caveat here, and there is a, a bit of a disclaimer that to get planning permission, it does cost a bit of money. So depending on what you're looking to get, so if you're looking to build apartments, whether you're looking to build houses, it's approximately £500 per unit. So if, you're, if you've got a piece of land and you've only paid a pound for the option of that land, and you're gonna go off and try and get apartment, uh, 20 apartments on there, that's gonna cost you 10 grand. So, but whether you do this with your own money, whether you do this with someone else's money, the aim is to increase the value of the land, and we'll go through this, we'll break it down in a second, where you'll increase the value of the land and then you sell it for more than what you're paying the owner. So a big part of today's session is about planning gains and about how to get options on the land. So when we talk about options, let's just break it down as an example. We've got Mr. Smith over here, he's the landowner. So he's looking to sell the land. It's got no planning permission on it at the moment. Whereas you now come along and say, guys, okay, I'll tell you what, I'm interested in the land. With the land without planning permission, it's worth one pound. Planning permission with planning permission, it's worth 10 pounds. Now they don't need to know this. So what you can do is say, guys, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna come along, I'm gonna get an option on it. And with the option, I want to go off and get planning permission. Now, once I've got planning permission, I'm either then gonna sell the land with the benefit of the planning permission, or I'm gonna then purchase the property off you with the benefit planning permission. Now, you think about uh, large house builders like Red Bro, you've got your Bovis homes, you've got your Miller homes, you've got all different kinds of developers. Do you think they go off and buy pieces of land knowing that they may or may not get planning permission? No, they don't, because they're a little bit more astute than that. They're a little bit more strategic. What they do, they do exactly what I just suggested. They go to the owner and say, I'll tell you what, if you want me to buy it today, off you with cash, I'll give you, let's say, if the, if the piece of land's worth 100,000, say, I'll give you 50,000 for it today, but then the risk is all mine. However, if you allow me to go off and get planning permission, and it's gonna take approximately eight to 12 weeks, you can actually get pretty much up to the 100,000 pound that you're after, all dependent on the number of units that they're gonna get. 
So what they do, they structure it almost like in a staggered, uh, staggered way. So if we get 10 units, you're going to get this. If you're going to get nine units, you're going to get this, eight units, etc. So it's almost like a ratchet system. And the reason why they do this is because they then lock that vendor into certain prices. So, and the, uh, the vendor can see how many units they actually achieve because well, this will all be public information. So give you a piece, uh, give you an example. So if they buy the land off them outright with no planning permission, it'll be 50,000. If they get seven houses on it, it'll be 70,000. If it's eight houses, it'll be 80,000. Nine houses, 90. 10 houses, 100,000. So that's just round numbers. Now, why would a vendor do this? It's because they've pretty much got more certainty of a sale. Now, if they've got no planning permission on it, they're gonna be reliant on someone that's a cash buyer and also prepared, willing to take that risk. Whereas on a subject planning deal, yes, the vendor is putting up, or uh, sorry, the vendor's allowing, giving themselves eight to 12 weeks. Oh, hello, there's my daughter. Right, close the door, please, close the door. Right, there we go. As you can see, this is a one take edit. We don't do any fancy editing. What you see is what you get. So um, here, so in that scenario, so the vendor will know pretty much what they're getting for how much they're getting. And there's scenarios where they can actually get in excess of what they were after. So if the developer has now gone off and got 11 or 12 units for every unit, there could be a certain amount in excess of what they were going to previously achieve. So it can benefit the owner really well. So I've done this for multiple, uh, multiple development deals. So I bought a car showroom uh, and we did a subject planning on that. I've done subject planning on, believe it or not, pieces uh, back, sorry, gardens to the rear of houses where the owner has owned the garden. I've then gone off and got planning permission on the garden, then we've title split it, and then we've sold the land off separately. So lots of different ways. Now, moving forward. So yes, there will be some costs attached to the planning permission. You'll have to get an architect, you'll have to get some drawings done. And then as a result of that, you'll then have to pay for the planning fees. So these are all called professional fees. Now, as a result of that, hopefully the plan is, is that let's just imagine that you've got a piece of land that's got 10, houses on it now planning permission for 10 houses now if each of those houses are worth let's say three hundred thousand pounds at three hundred thousand pounds that land is now going to have a certain amount of value in excess of what it was previously so just imagine that you've given the vendor a hundred thousand pound that piece of land now may be worth two hundred thousand pounds so that means that you're going to actually make the best part of a hundred thousand pound off a piece of land that in theory based on 10 units at 500 pound a pop, you've actually only put in five grand. So you're making 100 grand on a five grand investment. Can you see the logic as to why so many people like the thought of planning gains? Now, I've talked to you about it on a slightly larger scale of 10 houses. If you're just starting out, the ways that you can do this is just by one unit. You know, it doesn't have to be a large development. It can be one unit, it can be converting a house into two flats, it could be converting a house into HMO, especially in Article 4 areas. Planning is a phenomenal tool if you use it correctly. We're going to talk about uh, next week or in a few weeks time about how you can use planning on commercial deals and how you can use the prior notification approval process uh, to add a uh, further gains onto development deals. So keep an eye out for that. So today was just a short, sharp video just to give you an insight as to it's not all about HMOs, it's not all about rent to rent, it's not all about lease options. You can combine multiple strategies together. So you can combine almost like a lease option with planning gain or commercial to residential um, and put them together so you've got a multi-strategy approach. And that way you're creating real win-win scenarios, not only for you, but also the vendor. So hopefully you've enjoyed that small uh, bite-sized version video, uh, slightly shorter than normal. As I say, guys, hopefully uh, you've enjoyed that. More importantly, if you like free information, go and check out my podcast. It's called The Property Rebel. We release new videos every, uh, sorry, uh, new podcasts every Tuesday at 6 a.m. You can find it on 
uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts as well as Spotify, Stitcher, just to name a few of the places. You can find me on social media, so you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and Twitter. Finally, if you haven't already done so, download the Property Investor app. It's the UK's first property investment platform which showcases deals all over the UK. Whether you're looking for your rent-to-rent -rent deals or your HMOs or your lease option deals, feel free to go over to our website which is propertyinvestorapp.co.uk or you can go to the app store, type in property investor and download it straight from there. It takes two minutes to do that. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Please don't forget, like, subscribe and also share it with your friends. And I'll look forward to speaking to you all very soon. Thank you and bye-bye.